happy Halloween. This is a, a, a walk for All Hallows Eve. That'll be shortened now to Halloween. I prefer to think of a festival which shares the same date or the same time of year. Some people believe it's the origins of Halloween and that's Samhain. Samhain? Samhain? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's the old uh, Celtic festival, actually, which could be much older because it does, uh, there are resonances of it in, in Neolithic um, remains and earthworks. And that coincides, the modern date of uh, Samhain is the 31st of October. That's right, same day as Halloween. And that's a time of year when they believed that the, the boundary between this world and the other world had become more porous allowing the spirits of the other world to pass into this realm and the fairy folk and all sorts of other things that exist in the other world. It's on the 31st of October that they could walk abroad in this world. Isn't that magical and mystical? On a more prosaic note, it was seen as the end of the harvest season and the beginning of the darker days. And there was a belief that the spirits of dead relatives would visit the homes looking for hospitality. So we're just going to do a, a walk around central London, sort of between uh, around Covent Garden and Holborn, looking for spooky locations and locations which resonate with this time of year. So our first spooky location is here the Kingsway tram tunnel, the abandoned tram tunnel. And there's nothing spooky than an abandoned tunnel, particularly one where perhaps there are ghost trams running still along the tracks, which despite the tramway being taken out of service in 1952, the tracks were retained. Of course, as we know, Edwardian health and safety wasn't exactly up to scratch, so it's not unlikely that people died in the creation of this tunnel. Although it was a, a cut and cover tunnel, it's grade two listed. It was built on the site of what had been an area of slum dwellings. And all these streets here were cleared to make way for this new space. And that's why they decided they could put a, a tram track through linking the Angel and Aldwych. And it opened in 1906. So not only would this area have the obvious ghosts in the tunnel, I mean, abandoned tunnel just screams haunted, doesn't it? But also, you've got the resonances, the ghostly resonances and the echoes of the abandoned streets around here. The old, what would have been like a kind of slummy, ghettoy area, possibly a little bit like St Giles, that was cleared away at the end of the 19th century. And you can clear away the physical side of what was here before, but you can't clear away the spirits that are left behind, all the lives that were lived, lived here, all those kind of the intensity of the emotions and the feelings that people kind of ingrained into the, into the land. And that's still here. You can feel it in this wonderful uh, old-fashioned gentleman's shop here. This is a great... Well, I was going to call it a street. It's Sicilian Avenue. This is one of my favourite little passages in London. Real echoes of the past. So here we have Swedenborg House, home to the Swedenborg Society, and it's dedicated to uh, activities, events and culture and various activities that relate to the life and work of the Swedish mystic Emanuel Swedenborg, who was active in the 18th century. Now Swedenborg believed that he'd been given this kind of spiritual power by the Lord that allowed him to visit heaven and hell equally and converse with angels, devils, demons and other kind of things that you find in the other world. And there's still this building here, which is very active in the centre of London, that still incorporates these ideas in some kind of way. I've had a screening of a film in there. My London Overground film was screened in here. 
and Ian Sinclair very recently did a book launch here and has done many events here in the past. It's this connection between mysticism and this traipsing around is very much present. Right down this dark, narrow street now, back towards Holborn in the Kingsway. I don't know if it's just because I'm making this video with this kind of spooky, haunted theme to it, but I'm noticing lots of people who are walking very kind of slow and almost in like a kind of zombie-like fashion. It's almost as if perhaps spirits have crossed over the boundary into this world from the other world to make an appearance in the video maybe. It's definitely something going on tonight. Princess Louise pub over there. That is one of the great pubs in London. It's a really wonderful old gin palace with some of the original features. Some people have debated how many of them are original, but um, how many were maybe taken out and then restored, but it is a great old period pub. But of course, as a gin palace, it would have been a place of real woe and distress at one point when London had a really bad gin problem. Hogarth's Gin Alley is not that far away from here at all. Just in fact, maybe a few hundred yards. I realised that we should probably have gone to Senate House Library at, uh, at University College London, because that was used in uh, the original Ghostbusters film. Really, the only Ghostbusters film, let's be honest. It's an iconic location in that film. It's an iconic location in London but it's in completely the opposite direction to our route, which is going to go down through Covent Garden, down to Aldwych. So I'll put in a shot of Senate House Library from a previous walk, so you can admire the majesty of the architecture and conjure up the scene in Ghostbusters in your own head. This is Great Queen Street, our next location. The Grand Connaught Rooms. That will definitely be full of ghosts, there's no doubt about that. There might be ballroom dancing ghosts, but they're still spooky. So here we have Freemasons Hall. This is the, the meeting place of the United Grand Lodge of England and this is also where the chapter of Royal Freemasons meet. So you can imagine it's pretty well built. This building here actually dates from uh, 1933 but there have been previous Masonic temples on this site dating back into the 1700s. So it's a place steeped in mystery and mysticism. So we're told I can't imagine a load of builders getting together to have a bit of a jolly is that mystical but who knows we're told the freemasons get up to all kinds of kind of ritualistic activities there's actually quite a few of them having a drink in the pubs along great queen street here actually and uh, i don't really want to ask them because they're not permitted to say what they get up to it's been used in uh, in filming before it was, it's actually in the the movie adaptation of the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy where there's a group of people i can't pronounce their name i'll put their name on the screen here they gather to uh to to beckon forth the coming of the great white handkerchief and i'm pretty sure it must have popped up in a damn brown book or two mustn't it So we're going to turn off Great Queen Street into Dury Lane and a couple of very spooky places just down here. So I'm walking through the portico that runs down one side of uh, Theatre Royal, Dury Lane. And this is said to be one of the most haunted theatres in the world. And bearing in mind that all theatres are incredibly haunted, that's saying a lot. They're said to be the ghosts of at least two clowns that haunt this theatre here. And there's also a ghost known as the Man in Grey. I actually worked a shift in the bar here many, many years ago. 
and actually some of the older members of staff did tell me about the ghost and they said you don't want to be here after the theatre closes everyone dashed to get cleaned up and get everything ready so they could get out before the theatre closed just over the road from the theatre royal is the place in London where I have been the most scared in London, beyond the shadow of a doubt. The Fortune Theatre, home to the terrifying play, The Woman in Black, adapted from the, uh, the novel by Susan Hill. It is genuinely, genuinely a terrifying experience to watch that play. I make no bones about the fact that I screamed out loud at one particular point. It's also one of the longest running plays in the West End. It's been in this theatre here since 1989. So I think just two more stops on our spooky Halloween Samhain tour around Covent Garden and Holborn. So here we have the famous Royal Opera House which as a theatre, it goes without saying that it's haunted. We can take that for granted. As an opera house, I think it'll be particularly haunted, you know, Phantom of the Opera and all that. But I've chosen this location because it is the, uh, it is the setting for the, for the final chilling scene in Ben Aranovich's first book in the Peter Grant series, The Rivers of London. And it's a really shocking scene which takes place here at the Royal Opera House. If you haven't read that book, I know I keep banging on about them, but I highly, highly recommend it, particularly as this year is the, is the 10th anniversary. And of course, there'll be the spirits of all those uh, criminals that were apprehended by the Bow Street runners, this street here being the home of British policing. And I think that uh, does crop up in the Ben Aranovich book, In the Rivers of London, I believe. That might be the source. Of, uh, of the main protagonist's displeasure, the main spirit's displeasure. I'm slightly giving away the next and final location. So the final location in our spooky walk around this part of central London is St Paul's Church, Covent Garden, the Actors Church. And this is where, stood in this portico here, at the front of the church, Peter Grant in the rivers of London has his first encounter with a ghost. Whilst he was stood on patrol right where I'm stood now, looking along this portico, and he sees a ghostly figure just along there. It's at that point that he realises that he has the gift of sight, of seeing ghosts and spirits and other otherworldly entities great setting for that story. This is a great spot. You can imagine on a cold winter's night seeing the ghost of an old 18th century actor floating through this portico here. By the looks of the activity on that pub over there, there'll be a few ghostly <laughs> faces in the morning as well. They're really going for it over there. Good luck to them, right? Well, thank you so much for joining me on that spooky, ghosty, Halloween, Samhain, however you pronounce it, walk. I've, <laughs> I've really enjoyed this. It's been a lot of fun. And I'm sure there's loads of other kind of spooky haunted places in this area that you can think of. So by all means, add those in the comments below. And also other spooky haunted places in London. You see, there's the obvious ones of, of the Tower of London and, and Hampton Court Palace, but there's going to be lots of others too. So um, next week's video, we'll be back to the normal kind of out strolling around. It's going to be a really special video, actually. I'm really looking forward to that walk. As I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. It's going to be really good. Obviously, I know where it's going to be, but you don't. So make sure you, uh, you tune in for that one. <laughs>